really want to thank the uh, Vienna Austria Center, uh, the Vienna Convention Bureau, all our great sponsors, exhibitors, NGO partners, and, and a very special thanks to all our volunteers. Uh, volunteers bring you this, this event. This is not a high paid event. This is a, a from the heart event. Uh, and, uh, and the volunteers are absolutely uh, not just working on the periphery, but actually uh, driving this event at the highest level. And that includes the translators uh, and everyone for the ICPC, the International Cannabis Policy Conference. Um, our organizers, again, uh, the FAT team, uh, 13 in our core team, uh, and our conference program committee, the conference on-site staff and off-site as well, working on social media, working from home, working with uh, some of our network partners and media partners around the globe who are following what we're doing very closely. Um, on-site team, I, I just want to, you know, there's so many great team members, I really want to mention them all, but I decided to mention three. And uh, a special thanks to Kenzie, uh, Ribule, uh, Ferry, uh, Giewisch, and Hannah Gabriel Gabriela, Gabriela, it's an early morning, I'm sorry. But uh, these three, uh, for special attention, but certainly we have a very hard work on the team that's put in a lot of time, and I uh, just want to give them a round of applause. I want to uh, get out of the way some of our basic rules. Um, no smoking inside the venue, but we have a smoking terrace. <coughs> Overlooks the United Nations. There's a nice vibe out there. Um, it's about as close as you can get to the United Nations and actually smoke above ground. So, so you know, the UN used to have a smoking terrace, but now we have to go underground. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you if you yeah if you catch the wind just right, the security guards just below at the United Nations will smell us here. So yeah, when I say security guards, I, I, Amy is quick to correct me that they're real police. It's uh, international law on the other side of the of the you know anything you drop, you're gonna have to get a country to approve you to go get it. <laughs> so. Anything, it's just CBD. Yeah, yeah, it's just CBD. CBD is legal here, they sell CBD flour here, so. That's, that's true enough, we have plausible deniability. So, but use our terrorists for smoking, please do. And we ask for a smart, tolerant, diplomatic spirit in all our discussions and behavior uh, here in, in, our, in, our, in our process, in our meetings, in our discussions. Um, and please try to fill out an awards form. Uh, we'd like participation in the awards process. I, I like this awards thing. It's not like other conferences. You're going to find a lot of things about what we're doing. These couple of days are not going to be like other conferences. Um, the awards are about spotlighting our sponsors' uh, efforts to create sustainability in the cannabis industry and in the cannabis uh, space. Uh, and um, our awards process is designed to give them an opportunity to tell you straight uh, to your face, you know, kind of what what they're doing and how they would frame that work. So we really, I think it's going to be really interesting and we're really proud of this process. Uh, we're going to have two different separate things where one, we present the, uh, you know, prospective awardees and then the other one where we actually give them the awards. So I think the process will be a lot of fun and, and participate with that. Um, we have, I'm looking for it, it's right underneath here. We have a document that we are working on and we've got just the one copy at the moment, but I think we've got more. Huh? That's not the sustainable. Oh, you're supposed to give me the sustainable. You don't have the report, so I haven't got the report, so I'm holding this up and I'm describing something else. So, yeah, but we, you, you hopefully have a program. But yeah, we have a uh, sustainable development goal uh, document that we're working on. And the idea of this uh, document, very quickly, is, is just to try to come up with a starting point for two things. One, to kind of uh, bring together some of the minds and, and some of the thoughts on standards and norms and, and uh, you know, what we'd like to see as we begin this journey of a regulated cannabis market instead of a prohibition. Um, and uh, you know, the second thing is to uh, help us all interact with this process, which is a massive process that the United Nations is now undertaking. They have a 10-year timeline. They're starting next year in March. Um, at, the, at the CND that we'll be attending. I'll explain what CND is in a minute. And 
in, in that time period from 2019 to 2030 will be the time period that we'll be seeing a lot about sustainability and sustainable development goals. This is all about new metrics of success. This is about getting rid of the old metrics of success, at least for us in drug policy. It's about getting rid of the old metrics of success of did we lock up more people than last year? Did we cut down more plants than last year? And replace it with am I more healthy? Am I safer in my home and my, my, my country? It, are we protecting the environment? Are we being sustainable? And I, I think this is really great, uh, a great thing that they're undertaking at the UN level. It gives the opportunity for everyone in every country to participate in something, and I'm sure that's why they're doing it. And this is our, our way to participate and link up with that, that process. I encourage everyone's participation in this. Um, we're gonna, like I said, we have a document that's a working document that we've got a draft that's actually ready to view now during the conference. And if you ask about it and meet up with any of our core team members, you'd be funneled into that process. And I'd like to see those uh, members of, of, our, uh, of our attendees that are interested in working on this actually participate in the final draft that we're gonna then uh, finish between now and March. And in the formal process, we're gonna deliver this to the United Nations uh, Commission of Narcotic Drugs and uh, put it through their uh, insertion process that we deliver to all the member states in an official capacity through the ministerial section of the next high-level meeting that they'll have in March. So, and that leads me to my next thing. I, I wanted to just really quickly run through a bunch of terms that you're gonna be hearing and kind of what they mean. Uh, just to give you a starter, and you'll probably hear this repeated a little bit later, and it'll help you you know, not be uh, lost if, you, if this is all new to you. Um, and I'll do it quickly for those who's not new to you. But uh, United Nations, of course, uh, and the World Health Organization. Uh, United Nations is uh, next door, and uh, drug policy is, is mostly done in Vienna. New York is where the leadership of the United Nations and the so-called Economic and Social Council of the United Nations, and that's uh, also the Secretary General's Office of the United Nations. So we interact with those entities and as non-governmental organizations or NGOs, we have to petition the Economic and Social Council, the ECOSOC of the UN, for our badges, these badges, which then get you into a UN headquarters so that you can participate in roundtable discussions and attend as an observer the more formal uh, state discussions. Inside the process, we have the uh, United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, the UNODC, and the Commission on Narcotic Drugs. The Commission on Narcotic Drugs is the entity that has the day-to-day -day responsibility, if you will, for updating and maintaining the international drug control treaties. The single convention on narcotic drugs, as we call it, which is actually comprised of three treaties, the 1961 convention, the 1971 convention, the 1988 convention, most of what we're going to be talking about is in the 1961 convention, although they, most of cannabis is in the 61 convention, THC is in the 71 convention. So this is all perfectly confusing on purpose, makes it very difficult to participate and, and take part in the uh, discussions, and, and I swear to you, uh, if I remember Harry Anslinger, uh, this was on purpose. So, um, you and uh, by the way, I mentioned Harry Anslinger, he's a nemesis to the cannabis movement, was the head of the Narcotics Bureau in the United States, but lesser known, he was the ambassador to the United Nations uh, Drug Program for the United States and was one of the architects of the 1961 convention. So, the UNODC is the secretariat, the secretariat of the uh, Commission on Narcotic Drugs, and they're who we mostly communicate with and through to uh, interact with the CND. Uh, the International Narcotics Control Board, or INCB, is the quasi judicial uh, authority in the UN, and they're the ones that interpret what the treaty says and yell at countries when they think that they're not acting within the parameters of the treaty. That is basically all they do, is yell at countries. They have no further authority than that. But they're also tasked with uh, protecting the access to medicine, and they're the ones that fill out all the forms for countries to uh, regularly update their medicinal access to drugs and part of that food chain of the paperwork. Um, I mentioned the WHO. Within the WHO, World Health Organization, we have the ECDD, the Expert Committee on Drug Dependence. That's who we've been working with to do this critical review on cannabis. They will then deliver this critical review uh, findings in March, I hope, 
and uh, we'll get this process done of voting on it. Um, a little note on a vote at the Commission on Narcotic Drugs, everything that's done at the treaty level is done by consensus. Absolute consensus. Every single member state, and I'll mention, the Commission on Narcotic Drugs is made up of 53 member states, I believe. And each country has a vote, and you have to have every vote to, to pass like a substantive change in the treaty. However, the World Health Organization is tasked with the evidence-based recommendations for change within the treaty, and that's just a simple majority vote. So it gives us an opening to actually have an effect on the treaty level with this World Health Organization process, and that's why we're so excited about it. You'll hear a lot more about it. Um, some of our partners that we work on this with, the Vienna NGO Committee, VNGOC, the New York NGO Committee, New York and NY NGOC, and the Civil Society Task Force, at CSTF, are our entities that are official recognized uh, entities with the United Nations, working cooperation with the United Nations um, to facilitate non-governmental organization access and support uh, of the process. And I'll, I'll mention that the UN really needs us and appreciates our input as civil society, so-called civil society or non-governmental organizations. We have an on-the-ground view. They have like the 80,000 foot view. And they really need to be able to look through our eyes and, and have the uh, opportunity to um, you know, really uh, see the individual's perspective, you know, instead of the governmental perspective. And they do appreciate us, but we're guests. And that's why I mentioned we're just visitors and guests and we have a lot to uh, appreciate that. Yeah. We have a lot to uh, uh, contribute. So I want to you know, recruit the audience. I, wanna, I want you guys to help us uh, to get these recommendations that are going to come from the World Health Organization passed at the Commission, work with the member states, get them to vote our way. And uh, uh, I encourage the audience to work as a group. Um, it's not by accident that we brought you together. Um, we believe you all present the best foot forward for a step for better world drug policy. And just a last note, FAT is a not-for-profit enterprise. This is not this is our first, not our first event. We've sponsored small events inside the UN. This is our first event outside. And uh, we're very limited resources, uh, but we're going to try our best to provide you extraordinary opportunity, a unique experience, because today we're making history and helping to create the world that we'd like to see. So I really, really thank you for your attendance.